I guess the, the biggest lesson I've learned that's repeatedly come to me and actually sort of underpins the whole meaning behind the record is just uh, that you can go through terrible things and come out as a better person at the other end of it. And you can come out as a ha maybe a happier person or, you know, there's, there's, there's growth and evolution in, in going through those nightmarish situations that befall us all at some point or another. And I think it's kind of just how you deal with it and how you face it. It was something that, that I think, you know, Tom showed as well a lot. You know, he, he kind of looked at, at, at cancer as kind of a teacher, I guess, in a way. Like, it, it made him a, a better person, as, as crazy as that, I'm sure, sounds to some people. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's if I'm going to take anything away from the last 18 months, it's just pain is inevitable and sometimes necessary and some people disagree with it but like uh, if you're not gonna use suffering as an opportunity to grow and evolve and become a better person then what's the point you know architect and guitarist tom searle has died aged 28 we've been touring the world for over 10 years Put out eight albums. Just like my life. Tom was the main songwriter who wrote everything. But the band are currently unsure about their future. And I think people would death. completely understand if we were just to go, we can't do it. A massive part is just like, oh, we've got to keep this alive for Tom. We've got this massive, like, legacy. We have been a band for fucking 13 years and seven albums. It's really like holding on to smoke. Just that new reality, you know what I mean? I felt protective over Tom's legacy. I, I can't think of any situation like it. You couldn't really think of anything more personal. His twin brother and architect's co-founder, Dad, remains the band's drummer. I can't, I can't tell. Oh yeah, just keep, I don't know, just keep saying, I just want to hear Wales. Initially, after everything happened, we had a tour booked in with Bring Me in Australia. And Dan was like the first person to be like, right, let's go. It was the right thing to do in the sense that like, there would be no point in just sitting around and being stationary and just having all these emotions and just kind of general disorientation about everything. Since the first outing as Architects Without Tom, it was like a, like a massive deal. Um, but it was important. But it was definitely a very unique time to try and just that new reality, you know what I mean? And then came home for a couple of weeks and then did a European tour that finished in the UK at Brixton. And uh, pretty much straight after that, maybe within the month after that show, Josh sent me a couple of songs and I sort of took them apart and made them into, you know, that architect's kind of character. I suppose that was the moment that I realised, oh, OK, well, so we could do something here. I didn't maybe realise how much I'd learnt from him until we started writing. And I would be like, well, OK, well, I can do this. I remember doing this. And, you know, the way Dan would give me an idea or the way he would sing it, it would be like, this is so crazy. It's almost like Tom's still here. Trying to make an album after something like that's happened comes with all sorts of insecurities and all sorts of challenges, but really Dan has kind of pushed everyone through that and he's pushed himself through it as well. My brother was the songwriter. He has died and we're carrying on without him and then I've written the album about that. So it sort of like has engulfed, it, it engulfed my life and everything to do with it is about my life. So you couldn't really think of anything more personal. Then Josh would start sending Dan songs and then Dan would start reworking them, making them more sort of like architecty. And then Josh was sort of figuring out the way we worked. And then Dan was managing to like make songs that Tom had left into like three minute songs. I think we all knew in the back of our minds that Josh was gonna be playing with us. He came into the fold, he already had material to contribute, and from then on it was 
okay, we have a starting point. You know, Josh was someone who was sort of historically been in and around the band. And yeah, you know, he was someone who spoke at Tom's funeral. He, he's someone who's close to us and he's someone that Tom had said he wanted to to play with us, so. We sort of spoke about like a, a working dynamic and in Architects it's actually quite refreshing to just write as like loads and loads of stuff and just not have to worry about the agony of like arranging parts. I can give him a song that's like five and a half minutes long and then he can chop it down and just remove bits that he doesn't need. Who am I to create a song for a band that's been around this long and done this much and is it the level it's at, you know? It's a high level to start debuting your own material. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully people don't hate them because then that would be really sad for me. Studios in Bedford, um, just on the last day of pre-production for our headline tour. Um, off to Europe on Wednesday. We start in Zurich, then we've got eight shows in the mainland, and then we come back over to London to go play Ali Pali. And we're basically just rehearsing the set, rehearsing the production, trying to get everything tight before we go and play. All right, Fred. Hi. Yep. Stage right. This is where the party's at, apparently. Um, yet to see it. Who goes up to? Cabs. Cab Sims, dude. Very exciting. Cab impulses. It's a pretty standard backline for us. Besides this monstrosity, which is my new keyboard rig, this is a big part of rehearsal for me, learning how to sort of play that. It's very simple, but I, yeah, not a keyboard player. The most important part of the show up here. The machine. I can't possibly see how that's the case, Alex. You're vital, Fred. Why? And up behind him, you'll see what has been referred to as the trampoline. Um, it's, all, it's for projections, but it does just look like a big trampoline when it's not being used. Yeah. My stuff and Josh's stuff is over here, and various computers that are doing all sorts of things which I don't understand. But what I will say is it's, it's a, a growing machine and it needs to all be tested out and go wrong a few times before we actually perform, so it doesn't all happen there. So that's why it's so important to come and do this. In fact, every night of that tour it was ridiculous. It was like, I remember we walked into the venue in Prague and I stood on stage. I was just looking out, it's like, how has this band got to this level? How are we playing venues this size? Everything this band has been doing, considering what our style of music is like, seems surprising to me. And it seems, I don't know, I like, I like to think that the band has a lot more to it than the surface value of being an aggressive metal band. There's a lot of there's a lot of values that the band holds. What we've done a lot on this album is is stand on stage in front of thousands of people and cry as men, and that's been important. And it and it, it does tie into the to the record. You know, having these big collective experiences that it, that 
create this sense of unity that's really absent in in our society, you know, allowing people to be real, you know, strangers crying with each other. And that was a big thing that I heard a lot in Rally Pally, was just strangers hugging each other and people were able to cry. And yeah, they're crying for Tom, but they've probably lost people in their lives that they're not really, they haven't really dealt with it fully and they haven't been able to express that fully. And it's kind of been like a forum for those people to get together because they haven't had a chance to to do that publicly. And I think that's a really important thing that needs to be addressed. You know, there's a, obviously a very, there's a story to the band. And I think people are invested in us as, uh, as a group of people as well now. So it's not just about like, oh, this album's cool. Let's go and see this band live. It's more about like, I don't know. It feels like people want us to do well. And I feel, or I feel like it's, that translates to us being able to sell out Ali Power. Playing Ali Pali was, uh, yeah, I found that a bit overwhelming actually, going from playing to, to three or four thousand people. When you then when you then jump to ten thousand people, it's like such massive jump still and. If we were playing to 10,000 people every night, it would it would feel like nothing, you know, but, it, but it's that jump. It felt like a big roll of the dice and the way that people reacted to it once we announced it and the way that, I don't know, it, it felt almost kind of not real in the sense that it was, it's quite a difficult thing to process because it was such a big occasion for us and it was such like a... I don't know, it felt like such a leap from everything we had done before. But Tom would not have comprehended what this would have become. He wouldn't have comprehended Brixton either. It's just it's like, it's, it's really hard to kind of wrap your head around for a metal band like us to even have anything remotely like this. Ali Pali was strange for me, because it was like, you, you waited so long for it. And then you get to the day and you're like, how has this been sold out? You're walking around the venue and walking in just like, you wait months for it to happen and then it's there. This is such a perfect evening for us. I hope you felt every bit of energy that you've given us come back to you. If you know the words to this song, sing it for Tom. And sing it as loud as you fucking can. Go with the wind. The weight of my world is resting on me and I When the surface rock, well I find paradise As I drink the sand, let the rest fly what a waste of time, I wasn't ready to fight Sing it in the pain, but I know it's for you In the end of jail
I got something to say. When uh, when my brother was sick, I used to think a lot about this, about being here, specifically behind the stage with my brother, telling him I couldn't believe that we were here. I couldn't believe that we had, we were playing this place, and he was he was better. It's at least 50% proof that manifestation is true because at least his music is here. We are here. And you guys made it possible. So I want to thank you sincerely for being here because it means everything to us. Because we have been a band for fucking 13 years and seven albums. And on behalf of Tom, I would like to say thank you. because he would be tearing up looking at 10,000 people here to see us play his songs. He would not fucking believe it. so amazing with him and his wife and I think yeah the he's the sole reason this album happened him and Tom and him wanting to do Tom proud and I think everything that we had learned from touring with those two the rest of us it was like whatever you need we'll go I think uh, I think Tom would be really proud of, of all of us but Dan in particular 